Hello there, Eric here. I'm continuing on on a video series about digital publishing. We're going to talk a little bit about ebooks today, namely creating EPUBs from other file formats. I'm talking about an ebook. There's lots of different formats out there. It's mainly due to something called DRM, Digital Rights Management. That's where companies that have made their e-readers, like uh, Sony and Amazon, have created ways to control content after it's distributed or purchased by consumers. That's one of the reasons we have uh, so many different ebook formats and why they look different and can or can't be used on other devices. So we want to try today to convert a PDF and make an EPUB for distribution, mainly for e-learning purposes. And to do that, we're going to look at a couple of different tools. One is Calibre, which is probably the most widely used ebook reader for PC. It is also very good, although not perfect, I haven't found any perfect conversion tool. Uh, you can convert from many different types with Calibre. And today we're going to be looking at converting from a PDF. And after that, we're going to take a look at the inner workings of the EPUB file format using uh, Adobe Dreamweaver. And after we've looked at what's, uh, what's under the hood of an EPUB, we're going to use a program called Sigil. And uh, that is a EPUB creation tool uh, managed by Google. And we'll use that to repackage our EPUB. So let's see here. Let's take a look at Calibre. And uh, I've loaded a PDF. We're going to be using this PDF here. It's a, a research paper that was recently published of mine. And uh, it's a good example because it's it has several columns and it also has tables and images too, so we'll see how that is uh, re redone or how that shows up after the conversion process happens into the EPUB and how that looks uh, on an e-reader. So in Calibre, uh, this is our one of our PDFs and we'll bring that up here. And Oops, sorry, I'm just going to take that up. We can convert books here and we'll take a look at that first. And converting books from a PDF, and we're going to an EPUB, but we can have a bunch of other uh, file types here that we can create from. A regular text file, um, more notable here, here's AZW3, which is uh, Amazon's for reading on a Kindle Fire. There's a couple of her down here too. But EPUB. We can put that up in the iBook store. We can uh, distribute that f probably most freely. So I have put in a cover image I created. And uh, you can uh, go through some of these steps here. You can put in a table of contacts. And uh, you can uh, change some of the stylings and typography. One thing I like to point out here, they have some heuristic processing tools embedded in the conversion process which will tell you or give you a hint about how messy this is. Um, it says it uses a lot of guesswork and in the conversion to see because uh, the good thing about ebooks is that uh, the, the text will flow and not be cut off and so it can resize to different uh, the various mobile screen sizes out there for reading ease. So it's going to do a lot of guesswork. I'm not going to even use the heuristic processing just to uh, show you how that's going to look like, but either or you're going to have to go in and clean it up somehow. And I'll show you how that's going to happen in a little bit here. So you put in all your setups here, your uh, what you'd uh, like the look and feel to be, what kind of fonts, what kind of size you have the fonts. You could even change background colors and things like that. How you can change that, I'll explain in just a minute. So let's take a look at how that turns out in an ebook reader. It's going to look something like this. Here's our cover. And uh, right away, you can notice some problems here. My name in 
in Japanese has a bunch of line breaks in it. Um, we'll go down here and you'll see that the columns, because it was multi-columns, decided to put line breaks in for the whole amount of space. So if, let's say, the it's an iPad, it'd probably be around this size and you're going to have a bunch of white space there. And uh, even on a something even smaller, if you keep the same uh, text size, you're going to have all of these extra line breaks in here, and that's almost unreadable. Go down a little further to see what it did to the images. It uh, messed with the transparency. That's a big issue sometimes with the conversions. And the tables are just stripped clean. They're uh, almost... You can't even tell the tables. It's just a list now. So what happened here? It took everything out. To understand what's going on here, we're going to take a look under the hood. And what I did, let's take a look at the file, which looks like this. Here's the uh, PDF. And what we're going to do here is look under the hood. So we're, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this into a new one just to see. copy and now I'm going to just rename the extension to zip because all an EPUB is is a website that has been archived with a zip format so now it's a zip file and I'm gonna unarchive it there we go and here we are, we have some files in here. And it's basically a website. And we got some CSS style sheets, and that is exactly what Calibre is making from those options I showed you earlier with your uh, font and uh, topography settings. And the index is the actual comment, and uh, it'll pack in the images used. So these are some of the images used in the actual paper itself, and there's an actual cover still here. In that form. So how does that look? Open up Dreamweaver and see what that looks like. So we're looking at the code now. This is an, uh, the index file inside the EPUB and it's all the content basically and uh, it's using a very basic form of a website in code. There's not a lot of uh, complicated coding going on here. But it reparagraphed everything, and so there's not even it's not even a line break. It's an actual new paragraph, and that's going to be all determined, of course, by the styling. But uh, without styling, that's going to create a lot of empty white space in the paper. And let's see what. It, so this is the columns again, and it's all using one class color be run, and it's just basically putting in line breaks everywhere. And what kind of Styling is uh, determined. They got some uh, style sheet, and uh, you can actually, uh, if you use Dreamweaver, you can uh, change these and uh, preview it in HTML form on almost like a website and start resizing your browser. And that would be uh, almost uh, almost as good as trying to preview it to see what it looked like on an e-reader. So that's what it looks like underneath. So what I did is I went through and I took out the extra line breaks in the code and then we're going to put it into Sigil just to help us get the last bit of uh, formatting in. And uh, Sigil uses is basically a very simple form of a HTML editor. You can highlight things and uh, give them uh, heading options. And that's almost like a WYSIWYG editor on a website as well. So I put in, I uh, edited the table of contents, I uh, put in the cover, and then we're going to use it to pack it right back up again. And uh, how did that look at the very end in, uh, as an ebook? I'll bring that up here. It looks much better, doesn't it? So let's see here. Table of contents there. We'll switch back and forth. And if you were swiping on an ebook, it might look something like this. So 
see if we can catch one of these. Oh, here's a uh, table there. And we can resize this to see what it might look on an iPad or an e-reader of a bigger screen size. But in almost every case, you're going to have to go in and edit it. Whether you use an HTML editor like Dreamweaver or a, uh, the simple version like your Sigil, you're going to, it almost all converters are going to have make some mistakes and you're going to have to come in and redo it, which is kind of messy. I wish uh, programs like Word automatically put out to the EPUB, but they don't. If you want to find out a little bit more, there's a couple more videos on uh, digital publishing on the website, which is erichawkinson.com. Until next time.